Today we're looking at um, what is a function um, so that you can really understand that notation as you use it in your math class. So to start with, we're going to define the word function. We're going to define it very thoroughly so that you understand what a function is in math. Function in the real world means like use, like what's the function of this tool that I have for the kitchen? Well, the function of my food processor is to chop things up really small. But um, in the math world, function has a very specific definition. So we're going to go through that a little bit. So it's a mathematical relationship between two numbers. There's an input and there's an output. And with a function, your function will map one input to its own output. Whoever puts a 3 into your function is going to get a 7 to come out of it, for example. Always that same input has to give you the same output. That doesn't mean that 3 is the only number that gives you a 7 as an output, but it means that everybody who puts a 3 in as an input will get a 7. Maybe a 0 also gives you a 7. That's okay. But with a function, the input has to give you a predictable output. So some essential characteristics for a function. Essential, if I tell you x, you can tell me why, and your answer is going to be the same as everybody else's answer. So each input is going to only have one output. You're never going to have more than one output for an input. Here's some examples of a function. You can have a function that is defined with words. You can have a function that's defined with a graph. You can have one that's defined with an equation or with a table. These particular graphs and tables are examples of functions because if I tell you x is 1, you will always tell me that y is 2. You will never give me a different answer. If I tell you that x is 0, and it's hard to read my scale here, but let's say that that's 2. Um, if I tell you x, you can tell me y for those um, examples. These are non-examples of functions. They seem like the same thing. It's a graph and a table, but these are not functions. If I tell you x is whatever this number is here, sorry, this writing is so messy. If I tell you that, then some people are going to give me a positive answer for y, and other people would give me a negative answer for y. So this is not a function because if I tell you x, you don't know which y coordinate to use. Um, Again, with the table, um, if I tell you x is 0, everybody's going to tell me that y is 8. Perfect. That sounds like a function. But if I tell you x is negative 2, some of you are going to say that y is 6, and some of you are going to say that y is 20. So this is not a function because the input has more than one output. I have one more way of explaining it, and that's thinking about a vending machine. You and your buddy go up to a vending machine. You both want aged white cheddar pirate's booty. Your buddy puts his $1.50 into the machine, and his input is 48. The output for your buddy is going to be pirate's booty. So he's happy. You go up to the same machine, you put a dollar fifty in, but you don't input forty eight, you input forty six. Your output is still pirate's booty. You got the same output, but you had a different input. That's okay. The machine is working as you would expect it to work. I didn't type a forty eight and I got apples applesauce, right? I my input gives me a predictable output. It's okay for there to be more than one way to get Pirate's Booty out of the machine. But if I type a 48 into the machine and I don't get Pirate's Booty, I worry that this machine is broken. So that's what a how I know that this machine is a function. I once had a student say to me, Miss Galt, my input into a, a vending machine isn't 48. My input is $1.50. 
I put a dollar bill and 50 cents into the machine, so my input is $1.50. In that case, if your input is $1.50, then there are lots of different outputs you could get. You could get applesauce, you could get strawberry applesauce, you could get pirate's booty, or you could get sour cream and onion pirate's booty. So in that case, if you're thinking of the input as money, then this is not a function because it's not a function because the output is unpredictable. I don't know what the output is for every person who puts $1.50 into the machine. I know what the output is for every person who puts a 48 into the machine, but I don't know what the input is for every person who puts $1.50 into the machine. Okay, so in this example, if my input is money, not a function. If my input is what you type in in order to get your snack, then Yes, it is a function.